Bereshith, chapter 11. And all the earth had one language and one speech. And it came to be, as they set out from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower, whose top is in the heavens, and make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered all over the face of the earth. Then Jehovah came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And Jehovah said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin, begin to do. And now they are not going to be withheld from doing whatever they plan to do. Come, let us go there and confuse their language so that they do not understand one another's speech. And Jehovah scattered them from there over the face of all the earth, and they set off building and they left off building the city. This is why its name is called Babel. Because there Yehovah confused the language of all the earth, and from there Yehovah scattered them over the face of all the earth. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and brought forth Arpachshad two years after the flood. And after he brought forth a pakshad, Shem lived five hundred years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Arpachshad lived thirty-five years and brought forth Shelah. And after he brought forth Shelah, Arpachshad lived four hundred and three years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Shelah lived thirty years and brought forth Eber. And after he brought forth Eber, Shelah lived four hundred and three years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Eber lived thirty-four years and brought forth Peleg. And after he brought forth Peleg, Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years and brought forth Reu. And after he brought forth Reu, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years, and brought forth sons and daughters. And Reu lived thirty-two years, and brought forth Sirug. And after he brought forth Sirug, Reu lived two hundred and seven years, and brought forth sons and daughters. And Sirug lived thirty years, and brought forth Nahor. And after he brought forth Nahor, Sirug lived two hundred years, and brought forth sons and daughters. And Nahor lived twenty-nine years, and brought forth Terah. And after he brought forth Terah, Nahor lived one hundred and nineteen years, and brought forth sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years, and brought forth Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah brought forth Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran brought forth Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth in Urkazdim. And Abram and Nahor took wives to the, to the name of and Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the, na and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Yiscah. And Sarah was barren. She had no child. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Urkazdim to go to the land of Kenan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah came to be two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran.